here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. In this video, I'm gonna teach you the correct way to acclimate your fish and invertebrates, but I'm also gonna tell you the science behind why you should acclimate that way. Let's go ahead and get started with the science. Now, I don't know about you, but chemistry class was a long time ago and it wasn't really one of my favorite subjects. So I'm gonna try and keep things simple and easy to understand so that when you're acclimating, you know why you're doing it and it all makes sense. That being said, if you want to learn more and you want to go more into depth, Coral Magazine has a great series of articles that goes more into depth and gives you more of the science and the chemistry behind all of this. So I encourage you to go check them out. All right, let's get started with ammonia. Now, when I say ammonia, I actually mean total ammonia. So ammonia in the hobby, we refer to it a lot, but really we do mean total ammonia. Now, what total ammonia is, is two different parts. So first, you're gonna have your ammonia, which is your NH3. Now the other part of total ammonia is NH4+, that's ammonium. Together, the two of those form total ammonia. And depending on a bunch of different factors, the total ammonia will either sway towards that ammonia or towards the ammonium form. Now, Something you should know is that when it's in the ammonia form, that's the NH3, it's gonna be way more toxic for your fish and invertebrates. Versus being in the ammonium form, that's the NH4+, that's something that they can actually handle and deal with. All right, okay, let's move on to our next step, and that's pH. Like a lot of things in the aquarium, water parameters, so say temperature or salinity, and in this case, pH, can impact other factors like total ammonia. So when you have a lower pH, that's anything like 6.5 or less, that total ammonia that you have is going to be more in the form of that non-toxic ammonium, NH4. Now at higher pHs, the total ammonia is gonna be more in the form of ammonia, that more toxic NH3, right? Still with me? Okay. so. Let's move on. Say you just got a fish that showed up at your house. It's still sealed in that bag, right? You've got a closed container, so everything is relatively good. You've got your fish, it's in the water. It's been producing waste and producing carbon dioxide, which in turn is going to lower the pH. What happens at a lower pH? Yep, that's right. You're going to have that total ammonia be in the non-toxic ammonium form. What happens when you open the bag though? All right, you're gonna have gas exchange and that pH is going to start to increase. What's gonna happen when the pH increases? Yep, that ratio sways and you're gonna have more of the total ammonia be in that ammonia NH3 toxic form, which is something you don't want. That stresses your fish or invertebrate out and we never want that in our fish tanks. Okay, now that you know the science behind how to acclimate, let's go over the acclimation process. Now, one of the great things about saltwateraquarium.com, as soon as I put my order in, I got a confirmation email and it also had instructions on what I would need for the acclimation process. In addition to that email, I also had a sheet of paper that was included in my order so I knew exactly what to do. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, first things come first, they tell you don't open the bag, right? You already know why not to. We don't want that gas exchange and that pH to rise, increasing the stress for our animals. So we're gonna leave the bag closed and go ahead and put that in the tank to temperature acclimate for about 15 to 30 minutes. Now, when Saltwater Aquarium ships their orders, they're gonna either include a hot pack or an ice pack to help keep that temperature regulated inside the box, so you shouldn't need more than 30 minutes. Now, while you're waiting for that 30 minutes to go by, get your stuff ready for the next step. I like to use a five gallon bucket that I use for water changes and a pair of scissors and a net. Now that your animals have acclimated to the temperature of your tank, you're gonna go ahead and open those bags one by one. You're gonna pour the water from the bags into your five gallon bucket. That's gonna be waste. You can dump it down the drain. And you're going to either use your hand or a net to gently put your species into the tank. Okay, now if you have snails and crabs in the same order, you wanna put them at separate sides of the tank. You don't want the crabs to go ahead and try and get a snack out of those snails. 
Now, something to be mindful of is hermit crabs are relatively fast to come to life within your tank. It takes them about 30 minutes versus some of those snails. They can take a little bit longer, up to two days. So if you don't see a lot of movement, um, give it some time, observe them, make sure that nobody is harassing them while they are coming to life in your tank. Now, observation is the key. Just because you've put everybody in, you wanna keep an eye on things. Um, if those snails do come about and they might get toppled over, you wanna go ahead and right them. Now, something else I like to do in my tank, you might have seen my cowfish, Frank, trying to go after some of his new tank mates, is I like to feed everybody before I put anyone new in the tank. That just helps to eliminate another level of stress. All right, we've gone through this whole acclimation process and the science behind why you should acclimate this way. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, let me know. This has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.